Good morning. Our order of service this morning, Divine Service 3, which begins on page 184. We do have Holy Communion this morning. Uh, we begin with our first hymn, number 846, and as we prepare for worship, the ringing of the bells. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father. 
beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. And delivers them out of all their troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Uh, what comes next in the bulletin is listed as a family choir singing. Um, the choir is going to sing uh, the verses, uh, and we invite the congregation to join in in singing the refrain. So if you'd like to turn to hymn number 542, uh, this is a new and, uh, and unfamiliar uh, hymn, so if you want to listen to the choir, go through it, uh, and then uh, join in with the refrain uh, as you see fit.
The Old Testament reading for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost is written in the first chapter of the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malon and Kilion died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. He will command his angels concerning you. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. The epistle reading, the second letter of St. Paul to St. Timothy, the second chapter. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits, since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, 
we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our confession of faith is the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was affirmed by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us through the conscious power. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in the glory to judge both the living and the dead the kingdom of God and And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Our focus this morning is the book of Ruth, at least the first chapter of which was read earlier uh, this morning. And I think uh, as we consider the book, especially as we just start reading from the beginning of the book, we're left with the question, why? Why is this important? Why does this matter? It's an interesting story. Uh, A seemingly random family in Israel during the time of the judges, uh, which on our calendar would be about 1,200 years, uh, about 1,200 B.C., uh, 1,200 years before Christ. Um, But their lives are very difficult. Uh, The story is actually quite sad. Uh, How many bad things and difficult circumstances befall this particular family. You have a man named Elimelech, his wife Naomi, their sons Malon and Kilion, and we are told, first of all, that they are forced to leave their home, that there is a famine in the land of Israel, Uh, and of course remember the importance of the land of Israel, the land promised by God, to their forefathers, to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and those who had come before. The land that God had given uh, and preserved to them uh, through Joshua and the, and the judges. And so the land was important to them. And so for them to leave their land, to have to move to a far away land in a different country because the famine was so bad they needed to find food, it's a serious problem. This is something that causes great, uh, great strain and great stress uh, upon the family. So they move to Moab. Uh, and again, the concern, uh, as always throughout the Old Testament, the concern is that Moab, the people of Moab in particular, were not believers in the Lord. They were not the faithful people of God. They worshipped idols. They had their own, their own gods, their own beliefs. They had no knowledge of the true God. Indeed, at many times in Israel's history, Moab and Israel were at war. They would fight against each other. These were enemies of Israel, not friends. And yet so great is the famine, so great is their need that this family is forced to move to Moab. And there we learn that the the two sons, Malon and Kilion, take Moabite wives. And remember, again, throughout the Old Testament, this is something that was discouraged. There were strong warnings about uh, Israelites intermarrying with, uh, with foreigners, particularly because, again, they were idol worshipers. The danger. The warning was that if, uh, if a faithful Israelite would marry, uh, would take a wife from one of these foreign idol-worshipping nations, that they would forget the Lord, that they would abandon the faith and begin to worship idols just by going along with their wives. And so this, uh, this marrying of foreign women was strongly discouraged uh, for the Israelites in the Old Testament, and yet they do it. And then things get even worse. Elimelech dies. And Naomi is left a widow. And then Malan and Kilian die. We don't know how. We don't know the circumstances of their death. Uh, But they are all dead. And Naomi is left alone without her husband, without her sons. And only her two daughters-in-law, who are again not Israelites, but Moabites. Naomi even considers changing her name in Hebrew, Mara, which means bitterness, because the Lord has dealt bitterly with her. She, her life is one of suffering. She has endured pain and suffering and death. And the time comes for her to return to Israel, to return to Judah, to return to Bethlehem, her home, 
For the famine has ended and God has once again provided food for her people. And so at least she has uh, or can have a little bit of peace. A little bit of comfort in her life by returning to her home. And so she tells her daughters-in-law to stay in Moab. To find, to go back to their, to their parents, to find husbands for themselves, to live their lives in peace. But they don't want to go. And again, I think for, for, for those of us who, who are familiar with the book of Ruth, it is this speech that Ruth makes that is, uh, that is remembered, that is well known. It is significant that Ruth absolutely refuses to leave the side of Naomi. But remember, if Ruth is to follow Naomi back to Judah, it means that she is now leaving her home behind. It means that she is leaving her family behind. She is leaving the place where she lived, everything that she had known, and now she will be the foreigner. She will be the outcast, a Moabite living in Israel, living in Judah, with no family except Naomi. But again, what Ruth says here is so important. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. And the most important part of that confession, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. That is this greatest concern For the Israelites, particularly when interacting with foreigners, when interacting with Canaanites and Moabites and all the rest, was this concern about idolatry, this concern about falling away from the faith and worshiping other gods. But look at what has happened in her interaction with this family, her inclusion in this family. It is Ruth who has abandoned the idols. It is Ruth who has turned away from the false gods and who confesses faith in the God of Israel. And it is for this reason, and ultimately none of the other reasons matter, but it is for this reason that she is welcomed in Israel because she shares this faith. It is this reason that Naomi takes her back to Israel, to Judah, with her, because she shares in that confession of faith that Ruth has turned away from the false gods and the idols and has confessed faith in the God who has created the heavens and the earth, the God who has given his commandments to his people, the God who rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. The God who has promised forgiveness and life and salvation to his people through the Messiah who is to come. The God who gives his word and his spirit to his people. This Ruth believes, this she confesses. And so the fact that she is a Moabite does not matter. The fact of where she was born, the the fact of all the pain and suffering involved in this family, none of it matters. What matters is this truth, this faith that Ruth confesses. And indeed in this, there is a lesson for all of us. A lesson about inclusion and welcoming. Again, not as the world uses these words or understands these words, because when the world uses words like inclusion and welcoming, they, the, the world means it in the sense of anything goes. To be inclusive and to be welcoming means that you can never say anything to anyone about anything relating to sin, pertaining to faith, it, it, nothing. Welcoming means anything goes. But this is not the case. What matters is that we, 
regardless of where we are from, regardless of where we were born, whether it was right down the street or thousands of miles away, does not matter. Whether we are Germans or not, whether we are Americans or not, whether we are white people or not, however else we characterize and define ourselves, does not matter. What matters is faith. What matters is that confession of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What matters is that we, like Ruth, renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways, as we do in holy baptism and in confirmation. That is, we renounce all of the idols, all of the false gods, all of the false beliefs and false worship of our age, and cling to Christ, the true God. We confess faith, that we believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We confess that God has created us in his image. We confess that God has redeemed us by the blood of Christ, by the death and the resurrection of Christ. We are justified, we are reconciled to God by the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us his word and creates and sustains that faith within us and makes us holy. Regardless of whatever else we might be or whatever else we think of ourselves in this world, we are the children of God because Christ has died and rose again for us. And in that faith, in that confession of faith, in this truth, we are united, we are welcomed, we are included in the kingdom of God. You see something similar in the gospel lesson today. Uh, when Jesus heals the ten lepers, remember the, uh, the problem was with leprosy was not only the disease itself, which was awful, uh, and ultimately led to death, but also the isolation of it. That is because leprosy was highly contagious. Anyone who had it had to be excluded. They had to be run out of town. They had to live on their own far from anyone else uh, for fear of, of spreading the disease from one to another. And yet here too, when they see Christ coming, it doesn't matter where they came from. It doesn't matter where they were born. It doesn't matter what kind of people they were. They confess faith in Christ. They pray that prayer of faith just as we do each week. Lord, have mercy upon us. Recognizing Jesus for who he is. The Son of God, the Savior of the world, the one who is able to heal them. Indeed, the one who is able to heal not only their physical diseases, but also the, the spiritual, also the disease of the soul that is sin. Christ is able to rescue them from death and devil and hell. All these things, they cry out, Lord, have mercy upon us. Jesus hears their prayer and answers them. He gives them the healing that they ask. He even tells the one, your faith has made you well. We still haven't quite gotten to the, to the purpose of this, particularly the book of Ruth. The book goes on as Ruth follows Naomi back to Bethlehem. And for a time, again, there is great hardship and difficulty. Uh, Ruth uh, provides for herself by gleaning, basically going out into a field that has been harvested and picking up the leftovers and the scraps and the remnants off of the ground and trying to find enough grain to survive. But in the end, it is another man of Judah, a man named Boaz, who has compassion upon her and who marries her, becomes her husband. And as Boaz and Ruth live their life and their family together, we, we begin to see the purpose. We begin to see how God not only brings good 
from all of the evil and all of the suffering that they have endured, but indeed is bringing about the greatest good. For Boaz and Ruth have a family. They have sons, and their sons have sons, and on down through the generations. The reason that Ruth is so significant in the Old Testament is that Ruth has a great-grandson by the name of David, who becomes the king of Israel. And Ruth has a great-great-grandson by the name of Solomon, also the king of Israel. Indeed, the two greatest kings of Israel's history. We would say in our day that David is, is it one-eighth or one-sixteenth Moabite? (laughs) Totally unexpected. And yet this is how God brings about good for his people, even in the midst of suffering. And as Ruth is an ancestor of David and Solomon, so it also is that Ruth is an ancestor of Jesus Christ. A great, great times about 30 grandmother of Jesus. Jesus, who is also born in Bethlehem in Judah, Jesus, who is also a king, like his ancestors David and Solomon. Jesus, who in his own day was an outcast that is rejected by so many of his own people. Yet Christ, our Savior, the Messiah, the fulfillment of all of the promises of God of life and salvation, the greatest good that God brings into the world to address the great evils of sin, death, devil, and hell. And so our faith, our hope, our lives are centered on Jesus. Regardless of who we are or where we come from or where we were born, none of that matters. It matters to the world. The world obsesses about such things, but it doesn't matter. What matters is Christ. What matters is faith. Believing and trusting in Christ, his cross, his resurrection, his word, his forgiveness. We too are called, invited, included, welcomed, like Ruth, to renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways, to renounce the idols and false gods of the world, and to confess that faith in Christ. To confess that he is our God, that his people are our people, that we shall follow wherever he leads, knowing that he leads us through death and the grave to resurrection and eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, by your Son, Jesus Christ, you have delivered us through your word from the dread leprosy of sin. You are pleased daily to manifest your gracious help in our every need. We implore you to awaken our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that we may never be unmindful of your benefits, but ever live in your fear, trust in your mercy, and thank and praise you with a joyful heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world, for all those who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our congregation, for its mission and people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work that God has given us to do. For our schools, our day school, high school, universities, colleges, and seminaries, that all those who teach and learn would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would call them home to their Father. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, or poverty, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for our government, for those who have been set into positions of leadership, for those who serve in law enforcement and in our armed forces, that all would use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of your people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for all people in their various vocations, that God would grant us skill and integrity in whatever work that we set our hands to, that God would bless our labors for all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead us to cheerful and generous giving out of the bounty that our Lord has given to support the church and to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit and relieve your servants who are sick or suffering. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Give them comfort and confidence in you. Defend them from every danger to body and soul. Keep them in peace and safety. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into the flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us, to, gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faith the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is 
is truly meet, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Good morning once again and welcome to all of you. Uh, as always, take a look at the bulletin. Uh, uh, notice everything that's going on uh, at the church and at the school uh, in the near future. Um, two things in particular.